we felt it would give us the best access to the strongest possible group of senior insurance decision makers. InsureTech Insights is a must-do conference, I think, for the, for the network that is built here. Okay, so we will start the next session now. So welcome everybody to the fourth session in the Orange Room. This session will happen between 11.55 a.m. and 12.25 p.m. And the session is labeled as follows. Smart Home Technology, a state of the art approach to property insurance. So we will allow the moderator to introduce our guests, but I quickly want to mention a few things uh, before we start. So first of all, for the question and answers for the Q&A, we will be using Slido, and all you have to do to ask a question is just look at the back of your ID. You will find a QR code there, uh, and our panelists will devote a couple of minutes towards the end uh, in answering these questions. We will also remind you to download the Brella app where you can find the schedule of the day and also, of course, network with fellow professionals. Um, so please do it. We also have lunch from 12.30 to 2 p.m., which is served on all floors. So um, we've got that accommodated for you. And without any further ado, I would like to welcome our panelists. Thank you so much. Excellent. Is that working? All good. Yeah. Cool. Fantastic. Welcome, everyone. Um, really pleased and really excited to be here on this panel. Um, these guys, I think, are going to come up with some really great insights. So looking forward to it and talking about smart home technology, state-of-the-art approach to property insurance. So on the panel today, we have Ellen, who is president of the Sense Consortium, who are an IoT um, consultancy. We've got uh, Matt, who is director at Residio, who are a smart technology provider, um, including brands such as First Alert. We've got Olivia, who's commercial director at Sky Protect. And finally, we've got Bruno, who's VP of Innovation at Travelers. So welcome all. So, as I said, super excited about being here today. I think with smart home technology, it's that real intersection of technology, of insurance, um, the ability to create products that help you as a customer, as a consumer, minimize, understand some of that risk as well, and being able to take that forward. But really where I want to start is, is where are we today? What does smart home technology mean in the industry? Where is it being used at the moment? Have we seen, had, have we had too many cases where there's been what I guess I'd call the kind of dumb smart home technology, which is, you know, ask a question if you have a, do you have a burglar alarm? Yes, and we'll give you a discount. That's not smart home. This is about how do you actually use that data more effectively. But over to the team. So I'm going to start with um, Ellen. Um. So where we are today is nowhere where we should be because we have got all of this wonderful technology that can monitor the health of the home in its broadest sense and tell us when something is going to go wrong way, way before it actually really causes a problem. So a simple example, right? A dripping tap versus a big flood. We know this technology is out there. Why is it that we aren't adopting it? It is far too slow and... I think as an industry, we have a moral imperative for our customer base to offer them solutions that will help prevent incidents. Yeah, just adding to Elaine, I think, uh, you know, as you look at customer adoption, right, that, you know, data shows in the US, 60% of households have at least one smart home device. So we should, from an insurance perspective, we should look at this and say, wow, this is fantastic, right? But the fact is, most of those devices, they want to have the highest penetration, the device that not necessarily align to the insurance use case. Like, you think about water leakage for us is the most important thing. We don't have still that many, you know, water leakage sensors installed, and the penetration is still pretty low. So if you look from, from again, a industry adoption, a consumer adoption of devices, this is growing. Uh, and you know have you know pretty good uh, numbers, but for for insurance applications, still we're still not there. We're still trying to identify, you know, uh, the the best use case where we can align from a customer perspective and insurance perspective those uh, those opportunities to provide you know better services, risk mitigation. I think the pricing it's going to take a while because you need all the data. So that's I think where it's still disaligned. Yeah, sure. So just looking at a, a broader scale, right, Residio's products focus a lot on peril reduction, whether it's um, water, smoke, fire, security. We do a lot with energy and, and air controls, and we go into over 150 million homes, you know, and 
those devices, though, that focus on peril reduction are becoming more and more connected. Case in point, our, our solution users, are, we have over 12 million app users, I believe, at this point. And it's not just a matter of, of if this is gonna take effect, right? This churn is occurring where you'll see it become a minimum standard. And a savvier insurer is going to be able to work with their policyholders to harness that data, gain insights into that data, pass along benefits to that homeowner and identify those policyholders that are more proactive with making the investments in their home. Finally, Olivia, so you have a smart home product. Yeah, yeah so shall I just so, yeah. give yeah. a couple of minutes on what Sky Protect are doing? Excellent. So Sky Protect is a, a, a smart home insurance company that launched in May, May last year. So we uniquely combine a pretty standard home insurance product with smart tech devices. So we sell a bundle of nine devices. You get a video doorbell, an indoor camera, leak sensors, contact sensors, and motion sensors. Um, all of those devices are catch, uh, 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 caught through an app. The app alerts you when something goes wrong. Um, so you're getting sort of peace of mind um, and prevention every day. Um, I think there's two use cases in the insurance industry that come to mind. One is the, the, the one that's already been mentioned around, around pricing. So home insurance is all about pricing risk and smart home insurance. We can prove that, that it, those customers are at better risk. But also what we're trying to prove at Sky is that there is a customer need here. Customers, customers need more from their insurance and they need, and, and the smart tech provides them value every day. In our app, for example, um, we have about an average of about 20 engagements per, per month per user. So our customers are really highly engaged with their product every single day. That's really interesting, actually, because generally with insurance, it's you buy the insurance, and if you don't need to use it, you're not really engaged and come around to renewal. So clearly there's, there's benefits there for customers with smart home propositions and benefits for insurers as well. But do we believe, as a group, there's a real customer appetite for smart home insurance at the moment? Um, I'll go with, start with Bruno. Um, I think that, you know, um, customers are, are learning how to, the, the benefits of linking smart home device technologies with insurance, right? Again, as you said, it's like that initially it's pretty much discounts, but that's, you know, not meaningful. I think what's you know, probably gonna really trigger their interest is as you know, customers starting to see the benefits of the service, like in the claim process, that experiences can, can be changed completely, mm. right? Um, in terms of you know, preventing homes from potential water leaks or fire hazards, right? That they're receiving the alerts, and not only the alerts, I think it's some potentially sending someone to your home mm. to, you know, uh, to fix it quickly, right? And I think as they, you know, they see that the service and they see that that's actually impacting in the future premium increase that they might have because of that, that claim or the loss, I think that's when I think we're going to be able to cross the chasm of, you know, of adoption for smart home insurance. Can I, can I build on that, actually? So I think I, the, the words that resonate with me there for, for what you've just been saying is the word service. Yes. You asked us a question earlier about the word product. Yeah. I don't think we need to be selling products anymore. We need to be selling services that happen to have an insurance product behind it. And actually, I think there's a lot that you can take from the commercial world where the margins are slightly bigger for IoT adoption. And there's some great use cases where not only have you got the thing that goes ping and then a plumber yeah. rocks up, which is fantastic, you've actually got, okay, if this happens, what do I do? So you've got organizations that are providing videos and even some generated by AI, um, that will provide you advice on, oh my God, my tax leaking, what do I do before the plumber comes out? So you're adding value. That for me is the big adoption lever, is what are the value levers that we can give that will drive adoption, because guess what, we then get data, we then get fewer incidents, et cetera, et cetera. It's a virtuous circle. It's absolutely that, that point around we, don't, we shouldn't be providing products anymore, we should be providing services to customers. I think that's a really key, really interesting piece. I, th I think, uh, just building on that, I think if you think about the home insurance industry, I think it's a bit of a, it's a, bit of a grudge purchase. I think, mm. I think people, people need it. It's an unavoidable essential, but they don't actually get value out of it every day. I think they might get value out of it when they're making a claim, but then they're sort of in a, in a, in a worst spot and they might, their claim might not get paid, right? Whereas smart home insurance is, is genuinely offering 
value every single day. And I, I think, you know, going back to whether customers have an appetite for it, I mean, at Sky, we're, we're actively selling it at scale, right? So we're, um, on average, in the last six months, we've been the top three new business, right, for home insurance. And uh, we have 14 million households in the UK, 24 million across Europe, and a lot of direct channels that we can reach people through. And in our direct channels, 70% uh, of people are choosing to buy smart home insurance and pay more for it versus those that are just buying home insurance. I think that's a, a wonderful observation. <clears throat> Where there's, it, it really reinforces an article that came out from Parks and Associates that focuses on the smart home for data research. And they asked in their in the recent report on insurance, would you switch providers for smart with if they provided smart home products? And 33% of them roughly responded yes in that survey. It's really interesting stats, actually. So clearly, there's a customer demand out there. Do you think there's anything holding holding customers back from pushing that harder, or is it more on the the insurer side? From, from my observation, it's the insurer wants to try to take on as much as possible to take care of that customer, but there's a lot of process that's already in motion. I mean, take your, your policyholder base and divide it by 10 to 20 as a range. That's how many of your customers are going to be out investing in a new boiler or a new water heater, right? They're going to be meeting with a service professional, going over the financing options to install that system. I mean, if there was never a time to just educate that, that homeowner, that policyholder, that, hey, if you were to put in a shutoff valve while you installed that system, we'd provide you with a discount to go with it. Or if you would connect that, those devices back to us in the process, we'd provide you with a, a smart home or connected home discount to go with it. And that's, I mean, that's, and that's not you having to take on the onus, right? That's just you taking, taking advantage of an opportunity to... Um, drive what's already there. It feels like there's more collaboration needed across, across the industries, across the industries rather than just... Partnership is key. Yeah. Cool. Uh, let me just add, actually, mm. to your question. I think the other thing, you know, where's the, where's the challenge? Is it on the homeowner or is it on the insurer? I'll be interested in Livia's perspective on this yeah. one. It's that stickiness, right? So as insurers, we absolutely want our clients to be sticky because it costs us more to drive new business, etc. But if a, if, an if a homeowner sorry, wants to change insurer and they've got Sky's tech in there, they're stuck. So how do, how do we enable that data exchange and change from insurer A to insurer B? Because I think that's a big adoption blocker, actually. Yeah, no, I, I completely agree. I think that actually, uh, you know, there's, you know, data that demonstrates that once you, you know, insurance can provide the search on service, they are able to increase their ret customer retention over time. So there is definitely value in there. Uh, besides the, the loss mitigation, which is, it's another big component. But um, I, I think today the challenge that I see uh, and I'm looking at the U.S. market. It's been a you know homeowner that is very com it's it's a complex like thing because you have to deal with you know a lot of things at, at home right uh, from boilers from to the electrical piece and uh, you know so and when you look at the the devices the market's very fragmented with a product except for Sky offering but you know it's very I mean, it's difficult because you have different solutions different vendors so and then okay, how I get the, all the data, that information in one place. There's not a single platform today that, you know, can, at, at scale that can offer that for, for a customer perspective. So I think that's also a big challenge for, for adoption, right? As they look at the, you know, customer looking at different devices and different services, different offers, different technology. I think that, that's a, that is an interesting point. And I think there's two parts there in terms of follow-up. One is around that platform that integrates that data yes. and pulls all of that together. But there's also probably quite a significant number of, of policyholders out there who already have some form of smart device, be that the likes of a ring doorbell or some kind of connected smoke detector and so on. How do we, as an insurance industry, tap into that data? So I appreciate Olivia's proposition is introduces those devices into a home. But where you've already got some of those, where, where do we go with that? I think I think that's one angle, right? You can you can go to smart tech yeah. companies and and share data and mm. prove risk mm. benefits that way. What you miss there is the customer benefit of having 
end-to-end -end service. So front-end, you're getting alerts to your phone. You're then being presented with options on what to do about it. You can call your home emergency plumber out to fix the issue, or you can start making a claim through the app. So I think it's that end-to-end -end service that you'd be missing if you piece it together with insurance companies and smart tech providers. I think they need to be the same company yeah. doing it end-to-end -end for the customer. Yeah. Certainly the same front-end to a customer. Yeah. yeah. But just on that point, though, as other insurers wake up to the benefits of these devices and they similarly offer that end-to-end -end platform and service and so you know unfortunately if they did happen to move from from yourselves to somebody else mm -hmm. that interoperability of moving to a different insurer who's who's also got that do they have to then take your devices out put new devices in i think that is something that we need to consider and you have that interoperability or that data layer I mean, heaven knows how you do it, but, <laughs> you know, how do you make that happen to make that adoption easier for people? Mm. Agreed. Yeah. I would think that both is okay, right? You want to make sure that you have an offering that's direct to your, your, your customer, your policyholder, so they know that they have it. But you also want to be sure to capture what's out there that's in motion. I mean, just think about the smart devices in your pocket and how interoperable they are. That's important, right? You also want to be able to meet customers where they are, where your customer might be out in the channel, whether that's working with a professional service provider to install a system that's a little more complicated, or maybe they're out at a, at a retail big box, if you will, and they're buying a product for their own DIY project. And we've seen this um, when, you're, when you offer a service, we've seen this in our working with um, utility partners, right? Doesn't matter where they get their thermostat, professional DIY project direct from the utility. When you offer the service to enroll that thermostat for demand response for energy usage and have an incentive to go with it, the uptake is tremendous. And I think that the potential for uptake in the insurance space has an even greater value prop. Excellent. Just building on that, on that then, so what, what else should insurers be considering regarding developing smart home propositions? Helen. I go back to the service proposition. Yeah. Um, you know, how, you know, Olivia's point there, when, when you're in a state of angst because something is happening in your home, mm. you want that ready connection to an electrician or a plumber, et cetera, um, so that you, you get that immediate response, not, oh my God, where's old school yellow pages? Um, <laughs> you don't want to be going through that and yeah. having to go through a list of people that aren't available because you want somebody there to minimize the damage straight away or as soon as possible. Um, so I think that's a big consideration. I see that across the board. I think my little soapbox is insurers need to move to a service model, not just a product model. I think that point about minimisation is key as well, really, where you've got... It, this isn't about stopping things. Stuff happens. Yep. It's about minimising the impact of that and consequently the recovery time and the cost associated with it. Yep. Else? I agree. I think it's, uh, again, um, it's, it's a mindset change from just thinking about indemnification and the post events to you know prevention right and, uh, um, and, and, and but that that requires really that, that mindset change internally so always think about you know how you add those service and uh, how we're going to access the data and to access the data potentially you know the carrier needs you know at least in the beginning to provide the device to the customer for free because otherwise you know that customers might opt out and say no I don't want to share my because there are some private concerns as well, right? So you have to deal with some, I think, some of barriers. But I, I, I completely agree. I think the service piece is the most important one, and how we, we start thinking more about prevention and how we add value to the customer. I mean, I think you brought a great point. And uh, in terms of, okay, the devices, the smart home device can help you actually assess your health to an X-ray of your house and provide, you know, maybe suggest some improvement that you are not seeing. Right, that can definitely mitigate losses in the future. So I see huge potential, I think, but you know, there requires, again, a mindset change, I think, from insurance to insurers, and also, I think, how we sell that and, and go to market you know, for customers. Good. I think just a, a quick build, sorry, Olivia. Um, again, what resonated with me with what you said there is, what does the customer want, not what does the insurer want? Mm -hmm. We spend so long thinking, oh, they'll want that. You know, build it and they will come, and they don't which is why I think your proposition of it is so interesting. Yeah, I, I think it's, as, a, as an industry, both from the insurer and the customer perspective, 
Um, it's slow, and I think there's accustomed behaviours that go back in, in, in decades in terms of how people buy insurance. It's incredibly price sensitive. I think smart home insurance is offering value that people will actually pay for. I think a challenge is distribution. Price comparison websites have massive power, right? That's how everyone shops. 80% of people go on them. I think breaking that trend is hard, yeah. but if you have distribution channels and reach, and you can keep talking to customers and keep persuading them that this is a value product for them, then I think you can go far. I also think the customer mindset needs to change and they need to expect more from their insurance rather than just shopping for low price. And I mean, at the moment, there's loads of claims inflation, prices are going up. And what's the insurance industry doing about it? Offering lower tier products, less mm. cover, lower quality. Mm. What, should, what can smart home insurance do about it? Offer more value, yeah. more products, better quality. Yeah. I think it's that, that point about adding value into a consumer's life rather than trying to reduce, yeah, reduce costs by taking out the, the product, taking out points of the product. It's not the way to be thinking about it. Um, got some interesting questions here coming in on, from the audience, so thank you everybody for, um, for raising them. So about one here that we haven't really touched on too much is around trust. So questions come in saying consumers don't trust insurers, and we've seen that in reluctance to put devices into cars for motor insurers. How can we use smart devices to promote trust from a home insurance perspective? And we talk about the, the trust piece, but I believe the policyholders, homeowners, they do trust the, they trust the guidance given to them by their insurer on things that they can do to improve their home, right? Things that they can do to avoid problems. Mm -hmm. And if we could just guide more of that conversation and guide them to the right services to be able to provide, it reinforces your value in that relationship with that policyholder. Sorry, I, I totally agree. Um, I think there's deep mistrust in the industry from a customer perspective in their insurers. Um, I think if they can, they can, if customers can feel that insurers are on their side um, and, and offering value, then I think you, you are definitely making a headway towards it. Yeah, and I think those moments are really for, you know, for insurers that ha they happen when you have a claim, mm -hmm. right? So I think smart home insurance can help you increase the engagement the customers, as you know, Olivia showed and demonstrated, and we believe in that as well. Uh, and in those moments, you can demonstrate that you can provide a great service, yep. you know, you can mitigate risk and then build that trust over time. I think the brand, the service, and brand, it's so important. And, and I think, you know, carers, they, they gotta be careful about also, because you're gonna increase just the frequency of those moments of, you know, of trust. So, you know, uh, so it's important that, you know, um, we, we, we really look, you know, carefully about the service that being provided, and you really curate that, who's doing that, where are the vendors, you know, uh, and, uh, you know, how are we gonna offer that? So that's gotta be done really carefully. Uh, and thoughtfully because I think the same way you can, you know, improve and grow your trust and relationship, you can also damage, right? Because, so that, that's a... Um, I heard you speak last week, Olivia, and you gave a fabulous stat. So at the moment, there's a lot of under-insurance. What's the stat that you've been able to, the new business drive that you've been able to do because of people buying your product? Remind me, Helen. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm <laughs> Um, I Go think on. you said you had 14% increase in people who That's were actually exactly right. buying insurance for yeah, the first so time. It, we're effectively increasing the insurance market. So 14% of our customers didn't have insurance before, but they're buying it because they get the smart tech too. Wow. That is quite a stat, actually, when you suddenly realise how, yeah, <laughs> how much under insurance there is out there. Um, got a few other questions, a uh, few similar questions coming in around the devices themselves. Um, so... Firstly, in terms of devices that you're providing, and I guess, Olivia, in your case, you're providing devices to customers directly, what happens at the end of that year if they decide to move on? Who owns those devices? Do they go back? And that, sort of, that cost of the device, is there a commitment to the customer? Yeah, there is, there is clearly a, a, an upfront cost to the distributor mm. for, the, for the devices. We're, um, we're offering our smart home insurance product over 24 months. 
which helps with that upfront cost. Mm. So again, sort of against the norm of 12 months insurance yeah. products. In terms of if someone goes elsewhere afterwards, A, we're trying to, we're trying to increase that customer stickiness and, and hope that they don't. But if they do, um, we would look to sort of uh, decrease the effectiveness of their smart technology effectively. So they can't, they could still use it, but it wouldn't get the same, the same yeah. benefits that they would if they had yeah. insurance with us as well. So in a way, back to that service point we, we raised earlier on, which is actually, it's, it's the packages overall rather than just the devices themselves, which you don't get if you buy individually. Yeah. Just I think one point in terms of the devices that we're learning, it's, uh, you know, there are some, you know, important uh, um, hurdles in terms of installation. So as we think about devices, and I was asking Olivia about that before, is like, is that simple to install? Because we see that uh, one of our barriers is that sometimes even, you know, in some pilots that we run, giving away the device for free, mm. customers don't install in some cases because it's complicated. And then they feel like, you know, they, they need a professional to come in and to install it. So, yeah. you know, the, 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 the good examples that we're seeing is that when, you know, it's, it's a very simple device that customers can install by themselves, mm -hmm. and then we actually see growing adoption and actually use an activation of that device. Mm -hmm. So it's important to have that in mind as well. Yeah. I'm just gonna go slightly counter to, to some of the, the, not all devices are created equal, right? So there is, a, there is a security element to this. So we need to make sure as an insurance industry that obviously the, I mean, there's a lot of work actually with the, the police force around the security of devices because obviously you don't want it to be an entryway no. for, for a cyber attack. Mm. So there's, there's two elements to the trust. One is obviously what, what we're seeing here and what we've discussed, but also those devices, you know, there's, a, there's another insurance angle and perhaps that's an adoption blocker that if people putting devices in that are not sufficiently secure, that that could make their home vulnerable. So we've got to, we've got to make sure that we consider both angles yeah. of the device um, distribution and implementation. Mm -hmm. Matt, anything to add from your point oh, of view? I, product integrity and data integrity are, are ultra important and you want a key partner that you can work with to be able to do that. I mean, case in point, Residia with their security systems, I think it was most recent data point, we alerted 3.6 million homeowners to fires um, that they we're able to, that they were either able to prevent or avoid. Um, that's like one every eight seconds, and so you, yeah, you want you want that kind of robustness in place to make sure that what you expect works actually works. Yeah, great. Um, we've got about a minute left, so I'm going to ask one final question of each of you. And it's the, it's the classic. If we're all sitting here in five years' time, what does smart home technology look like at that point? I'm going to start with Bruno. No, I'm, I'm, I'm extremely you know, optimist about, about the future, and uh, I, I think adoption will grow uh, as, you know, um, you know, not only device, but the technology making it easier, right, to be, again, installed and, and cheaper, et cetera. But I think the potential really is that you couple you know, the data that is coming with AI. So from insurance perspective, the ability to assess real-time data, mm -hmm. right? And I think with AI, not, not only monitor, but extracting sites, then we're gonna get, you know, from again, from insurers, uh, for insurers that really got that jump in terms of pricing, segmentation, better risk, uh, uh, you know, and understanding of the risk and the underwriting perspective. Olivia? Agreed, yeah. I think secondly to that, I think customers will learn to demand more from their insurer. Yeah. So I think we've got a younger tech savvy generation coming through that expect brilliant tech and they expect value and I think they will learn to demand more. Great. Matt? The, the home is becoming part of that connected ecosystem, right? And what it, its implications are just tremendous. And I think smart home insurance will become a minimum standard for expectations for a homeowner, and the, the, the policyholders that embrace that and drive that change and innovation will be sitting in a great place. I personally think we have a moral obligation as an industry to drive this type of technology, not just in the home, but in the commercial sense as well, because you know we hear so many losses, we have an ability to prevent them. We should be doing more. Yep, agreed. Thank you very much, everybody. Really appreciate that, so if you join me.